Hello, making this video today about Averett Express. Um, I worked there for about a year and a half. I mean, it's been a few years back, but I uh, want to make this video on the pros and cons of Averett Express. Um, been over here in the east, you know, I'm in Virginia right now, so um, been over here, seeing a lot of Averett trucks, just uh, kind of made me think, you know, I could shoot a video on uh, my experiences there. Sorry, I've made a pros and cons list for working there. Um, when I left, uh, uh, I actually started working for Averett um, for the hopes of getting um, with the company I'd worked for before. I had a dedicated run out of Nissan in Smyrna, Tennessee. We lost those dedicated runs, and um, I kind of thought, well, maybe I'll go to Averett and I can run truckload for a little while and then get put back into. Uh, a dedicated run over there at Nissan because Avery has a lot of uh, Nissan and automotive dedicated runs in general. Um, so, to you know, kind of give you a little bit of I don't know the research on Avery. You know, they're they're more of an LTL company, a less than truckload. They've got lots of terminals um, throughout the southeast and kind of over into the Midwest now. Um, so, you know. They do a lot more of uh, LTL, you know, they're more of that type of company, but they do have quite a bit. Um, last I seen, they were they were over a thousand trucks on truckload division, so that's uh, that's quite a bit. Um, sorry for that vibration there, my APU just kicked on. Um, so the pros and cons of working for Averett, I've got uh, five pros, four cons. Uh, the cons aren't major issues, but, um, you know, I just thought I'd make people well aware of them. I would rank Averett, um, pretty high up, um, as far as, you know, being a company driver. There's a lot of opportunity there. Of course, every company is good and bad for different reasons for everybody because, um, you know, you really got to find that one that fits you, that you like, um, if you want to make a go at it being a company driver long term. Uh, and there's a lot of benefit to being a long-term company driver if you get in with the right company. Um, you know, lots of vacation, things like that. But to get into it here, my pros and cons on Averett. Um, my first uh, pro is home time. If you want to, you can be home every weekend. Um, I was home almost every weekend for the year and a half I drove for Averett. Uh, I had... A few weekends I stayed out, but they were voluntary. You know, they would send you a message on Friday saying, hey, uh, anybody want to stay out, you know, do a weekend run. Weekend runs were always pretty simple. They were set up well. Um, a lot of them were just going terminal to terminal with loads. Uh, so that, that worked out well. Uh, my, first, uh, my first con is night driving. Uh, because they are an LTL company, you do pull a lot of loads from terminal to terminal for them in that division. Because they have shuttle drivers that do, you know, back and forth. You know, they're not, like most of them are day cabs. They do have some uh, sleeper trucks that are shuttle drivers. But, <coughs> excuse me. But you do a considerable amount of night driving there. That's, you know, like normal truckload you do some night driving but it's a lot of times you can kind of pick when you drive more in truckload uh Averitt kind of their loads kind of pick when you know you, you kind of got to drive it when you can um so a lot of night driving sometimes that's caused by running ltl shuttling ltl loads from terminal to terminal sometimes it's because uh with Averitt, a lot of days where you get unloaded you get reloaded and then you move. So if it takes a long time to get unloaded or reloaded, you know, it could cause an issue. Um, so my second pro is lots of terminals. They have lots of terminals, uh, especially in the Southeast. When I was there, they allowed their truckload drivers to park at their terminals. Um, you might want to call them if you're looking at going there and double check and make sure they still allow that. Um, it made it made for a very non-stressful parking situation because most of their terminals are in the industrial part of town 
So a lot of times I would just plan on sleeping at the terminals every night. Lots of their terminals have showers and uh, break rooms. You can heat you up some food and take you a shower if you, you know, if you bring your, uh, I always brought my own towels and stuff, but you know, it's nice to have that. And not only that, you're right there in the industrial part of town. So you're typically within, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of your delivery the next morning. So that, that was really nice, you know, having a place to park. You knew you were going to have a place. You didn't have to pull into the pilot and see if, oh, I, is there any spots here? And if not, then i got to go down the road to Love's and check there. And, you know, that terminal 99% of the time had a parking spot for me when I showed up. Um, so that that's a huge benefit, parking at terminals. Um, the next con kind of goes back to the last con. Uh, it's switch shift driving. So if you did a, a normal truckload uh, one day and then, um, you know, you may not, I noticed a lot of times I would have to sit all day. The next day after doing a load, I'd get up in the morning, they, they wouldn't assign me to anything. They'd put me on a shuttle, shuttle load. And this caused, you know, like I slept all night, now I'm up all day and then they want me to drive all night with a shuttle load that, you know, pulls out of the terminal at 6 p.m. or 9 p.m. or midnight or whatever and run it, you know, eight, nine hours down the road to the next uh, major hub. And this caused a problem because, you know, if you are if you sleep all night, you can't really sleep all day. And then when it comes nighttime again, you're sleepy. I didn't like this. Um, this was one of the big reasons, uh, factors of me moving on because, you know, I, I don't like being... I like, I like being able to sleep on a schedule a little bit. You know, I know sometimes I run nights now and I have to get up early or have to run it late. You know, you got to do what you got to do, but that being off a whole day and then having to run the next night, that's rough on a truckload driver doing those shuttle runs. Um, my next pro is new equipment. Um, when I first started there, they gave me a, a Volvo that had, it, it had like, I'm gonna say about 600,000 miles on it. It was a it was a well used Volvo. Um, they didn't keep me in it long. It didn't have an APU, and they were at that point, you know, they were they were really really trying to get rid of all the trucks without APUs on them uh, for good reason. And so I was in it for maybe three months, you know. And um, the only thing I hated about that you had to watch your idle time and all that, but. About three months in, they gave me a, a brand new Volvo. I think it had like 100 miles on it when I got it. And, uh, you know, I had an APU. It was a nice truck, auto shift. Um, it definitely made driving a lot more easy and comfortable. Um, trailers, they they let some of their truckload trailers get a, get a little old before they trade them out. But they don't let them get like really, really old and, um, you know, in Nashville and Dallas to leave the terminal you got to run through uh, a check you know they have a they have a guy there does nothing but uh, check trucks and trailers for tires and you know he kind of looks at things he notices he knows what's gonna what's wearing out on trailers and you know he knows to keep an eye on certain brands and years and everything and so that's nice uh, you know they kind of keep a check on it they don't let things get too old uh, that's really nice trucks are usually three years or younger now um moving on my next con is um you have to park the truck at the terminal when i first started there they were letting me take the truck home maybe once a month and um you know i always get my truck they give you a lot of opportunities to keep your truck clean and washed and you know but there's i don't know it, sometimes it's just easier to drive the truck home and at the time, I only had one vehicle at the house, so uh, it was needed at the house. And I lived about 50 miles from the terminal, so every weekend that I didn't get to take the truck home, I was having to drive 50, you know, someone would have to drive 50 miles to come get me, then we'd drive 50 miles back home, and then when it was time to go back to work, drive 50 miles into the terminal, they'd have to drive 50 miles. Because so it was putting like 200 miles, you know, so I was like, can I just take the truck home, you know, save that 200 miles a week. Um, and they let me do it for a couple times, but then they got to where they were very strict about uh, parking the truck at the terminal. I had a good place to park it at home. Um, I would take it home, clean it out really good, but they, they just didn't want to get in the habit of that, I guess. So, um, 
I talked to some guys up uh, running out of the Columbus, Ohio terminal when I worked there, you know, they were driving a hundred miles and you know, which it's, it's not too terrible because you're only doing it once a week, you know, driving to work once a week. So a hundred mile commute is not, you know, it's like kind of everybody else's commute just strapped into one, you know, weekly commute, just kind of run, you know, put into one day. Um, but it's nice to have the option to park at the terminal, but sometimes you don't want to park at the terminal and they kind of make you. So it can lead to a long commute, you know, and you got to live within so many miles of the terminal, um, before they really will consider you. Uh, so that, that kind of good and bad there. Um, the next one is pro, um, great benefits. I had really good insurance when I worked there. I didn't pay a whole lot for it. Um, they matched the 401k and you know I built up a decent little nest egg while I worked there um, the the benefits are, are industry standard or better from what I noticed um, my next one that that kind of explains itself the next one is con um, I found it hard to change my dispatcher and that was uh, also another reason that I left the dispatcher I had um, he really didn't seem like he cared a whole lot. He didn't seem like he was interested in the job. He it was more, he kind of seemed like one of those guys who was showing up for a paycheck every week and he was kind of an older guy. He was getting close to retirement. And, uh, you know, I think he might've been overwhelmed with too many drivers or he just didn't like the job, but he was very um, business hours only. You know, he never stayed over. If his, if his time to go home was five o'clock, at 501 you couldn't get a hold of him um so it kind of seemed like he didn't want to go above and beyond then i wanted to change out because you know i was a younger guy i was trying to run hard and this guy was just kind of like the opposite he was wanting to do as little as possible he you know it just it, we didn't mesh you know we didn't we didn't we didn't work well together i talked to a couple people multiple times about changing dispatchers and they're like oh no you want to keep the one you got and you know, they just didn't want to go through the hassle of doing it all. That was a big reason I quit because, you know, uh, my miles were down a little bit. Of course, the economy was slow at that time. Trucking was kind of slow. Um, but I, I think I could have done better with a, with a dispatcher, a better dispatcher. Uh, my next one is Pro, and it's my last one. It's uh, Avery has a lot of opportunity to be uh, local or shuttle or move into that LTL division um, or do a dedicated run for a customer they have a lot of work like this a lot of dedicated a lot of shuttles you know a lot of those guys they do over the road for a couple years and then they find them a shuttle run and they kick back and do shuttle runs you know and make good money and I mean you're not gonna make as much money as if you're over the road running hard but you know you're home every night and the shuttle guys you know a lot of those guys they they get mileage pay so they're they um they're still out all week a lot of the shuttle guys that do uh teams or the guys that do sleeper truck shuttles they're still out uh throughout the week but they you know they only do terminal to terminal stuff or they only do a dedicated run for a certain customer um, you know, Averitt's big at Mercedes-Benz in uh, Tuscaloosa and uh, Nissan in Canton, Mississippi and Smyrna, Tennessee, Nissan. They get a lot of dedicated runs like that. So, um, you know, overall my experience at Averitt was, was good. Um, there was a couple things I would change if I could. But for the most part, I got, uh, I got the miles they said I was going to get. I was home every weekend when I wanted to be home. Um, yeah, overall, not a, not a bad company to work for. Um, but like I say, do your research. This is just, you know, my advice and my thoughts on Averitt. Um, uh, maybe, maybe hopefully this video will bring up some questions that you'll want to talk to your, uh, recruiter about if you're thinking about going over there. But later guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you don't mind, like it, give it the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to keep getting tru trucker uh, information and uh, yeah just like share and subscribe guys later